Now, the rest of the story. Ben's nephew was 65 years old, living in London, when for some reason or other he became interested in rare books, interested enough to invite a rare book dealer to his home. The gentleman brought with him a little of this and a little of that, one prize in particular, an extensive collection of political pamphlets dating back to the previous century. Well, Ben's nephew rifled through one or two, idly glancing at an illustration here and a word there, and then he stopped cold. He stopped so suddenly and stared so intently that the book dealer was compelled to ask, Are you all right, sir? Oh, yes, yes, the prospective client was quite all right. But what had attracted his attention was something written in the margin of one of the pamphlets, handwriting, and moreover, the hand script of somebody very special, the client's own Uncle Ben. My, you would have enjoyed him, the client told the book dealer. My uncle the poet. My uncle the dreamer, my uncle Benjamin Franklin, for this is the rest of the story. Ben Franklin was already up in years when he went to live in Boston with his much younger brother Josiah and Josiah's little boy, then only nine. Uncle Ben and his nephew bonded immediately. What's that? the little boy would eagerly ask, surprising Ben at his writing desk. Well, that might have been almost anything a treasured collection of political pamphlets, a crude sketch of some visionary device, a unique system of shorthand for recording quickly spoken words. Or that might even have been an original poem which Ben would promptly, proudly recite to the child perched spellbound on his knee. Now the boy's father, Josiah Franklin, had always loved and looked up to his older brother Ben, much as his own child was becoming enamored a generation later. And yet while Josiah had never thought himself misled, he grew concerned that his own son might be seduced into a life of daydreaming under Ben's influence. And so it was that during the four years that Ben lived under his brother's roof, Josiah struggled to offset what he believed as Ben's impractical example. For instance, when the little boy imitating Uncle Ben began writing poetry, Josiah roundly ridiculed it. For the child's own good, he told himself. And then Josiah would march the youngster out to the workshop for a crash course in some useful, everyday craft. And thus did Ben Franklin's nephew grow up magnificently confused, at once clinging to the practical and longing for the impossible, and occasionally combining the two. You never knew Josiah, the down-to-earth daddy who infected his child with all things pragmatic and sensible. But then again, you never knew Uncle Ben either. Instead, you remember and revere the namesake nephew, who learned realism from his father and idealism from his uncle, and a fledgling nation became infinitely richer thereby. For the little boy, whose formative years were spent under the equally powerful influences of two very different men, his name also was Ben. He was the founding father you know as Benjamin Franklin. Only now you know the rest of the story.